Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we're going to start with a new lesson of the immune system called Nonspecific Immune Response. We know that if a virus or a bacteria or any other pathogen wants to enter the body, there is some type of a wall that prevents these pathogens from entering the body. And the main wall or barrier found in the body is the skin. It has to be healthy and unbroken skin. But if we have in the body a wound or all these openings like the mouth, the nose, the ears, now we can see that the body is vulnerable and it's susceptible to the entrance of any other pathogen. So these openings in the body are have to be protected by certain substances. Let's start, for example, with the eye. The, eye are, uh, the eyes are uh, protected by eyebrows, eyelashes, and the secretion of tears, which have uh, chemical substances that kill any bacteria or pathogen. The nose, for example, it has tiny hairs, and it has the mucus, which is a chemical also secretes, secreted by certain glands inside the nasal cavity and the sinuses, and this mucus also has enzymes that kill bacteria and pathogens and uh, sticks them to release them outside the body. In the ear, for example, we have the tiny hairs and the earwax, also a chemical substance that has certain chemicals to kill pathogens and stick them to get them outside the body. And in the trachea, we have uh, microscopic hairs called cilia and of course the mucus, which uh, the cilia uh, will uh, vibrate and the mucus sticks the pathogen on it and uh, the cilia when they vibrate we release uh, the mucus with the pathogens outside our respiratory tract and for example in the stomach if any pathogen enters through the mouth in the stomach there is the stomach acid that is very uh, strong and kills uh, many microbes so here, if you want to memorize, to summarize what we talked about, the natural barriers, as we noticed, can be classified into two types, physical or mechanical and chemical. When we say physical barriers, it means that they are barriers that prevent the entrance of pathogens by themselves, but the chemical barriers are, can, are chemical substances that can kill uh, microorganisms and pathogens by chemical substances. Uh, the physical barriers are the skin, the cilia, the tiny hairs, and uh, eyelashes, eyebrows, and eyelids in the eyes. The chemical barriers are the sweat secreted by the sweat glands in the skin, the mucus, as we said, the earwax, and the tears. Of course, there is stomach acid and other uh, barriers. These are only the main examples about them. So, the natural barriers can be considered as the first line of defense against pathogens. They protect our body. They are the first protector of our body before the pathogen even tries to enter to the body. But here comes a question. What if the line was broken? What happens? Is the body now susceptible to diseases? Will the body surrender to the pathogen when it breaks the first line of defense or what? Let's take an example. If, for example, we cut our skin because we said that this is the largest natural barrier, we cut our skin with a certain needle, a certain knife, for example, and a pathogen enters the body from this wound. First of all, the blood capillaries inside uh, or under the skin, they are holding, uh, beside red blood cells, many immune cells such as phagocytes. First of all, the granulocytes in the tissue release histamine. This histamine is a chemical substance that causes the blood capillary to dilate. We notice that they become open in here, okay, and the blood flow increases. When the blood flow increases, more and more phagocytes will come to the wounded area, to the tissue where uh, there are pathogens. The second step is when the phagocytes come near the tissue or uh, to the tissue, to the wound, they start to engulf the pathogens, okay? They start to, uh, they start a process called phagocytosis, which I will explain later on. So these phagocytes will start to eat, actually, 
the pathogens. They will swallow them. Finally, when the phagocytes clean all this area, the platelets, which is the last component of the blood we learned about, the platelets come and seal the wound. They cover the wound to stop the entrance of new pathogens. And we notice that if we cut our finger or our hand, we notice that after a few days there is a layer here on the wound. This is due to the formation of platelets or the accumulation of platelets on this wound. This response or this reaction that take, took place when uh, a pathogen enters the body, this is the first reaction of the immune system. We call it, it is a non-specific immune response. So it is, its name is inflammatory reaction or inflammation, and its type is non-specific immune response. Response is what the body does or what the immune system does against a pathogen. Now, why do we call it a non-specific immune response? it takes place against any type of pathogen. So if a virus, if a bacterium, if any other microorganism try to enter the body, this response takes place at the beginning. This is the first response to take place, which is the inflammatory response or reaction. And it is, as we said, a non-specific immune response. It doesn't care what is the type of the pathogen entering the body. Now, this response or this reaction has common signs or symptoms no matter where it happened, in the skin, inside the respiratory system, in the uh, digestive system, anywhere in the body where there is inflammation, there are four signs or symptoms that take place or that are manifested. The first sign is pain. We notice that, for example, if we cut our hand or say our skin, we feel pain. And this is due to the, um, uh, if, uh, for example, the cut comes near to the nerve endings inside the skin. Redness, because the blood now is reaching high speed to the area of inflammation, so it gives a red color due to the red blood cells. Swelling or edema, because the fluid starts to accumulate in the area of inflammation due to the dead cells, etc. And finally, heat. We notice due to all this energy spent inside the inflammation area, due to the increased blood flow, etc., there is a heat, the, the area becomes hot. These are the symptoms of inflammatory reaction. Now, what about phagocytosis that I mentioned earlier during the inflammation or the inflammatory reaction? First of all, it's a process done by phagocytes such as monocytes and granulocytes, which earlier and these cells make a process of several steps when we say process it means there are several steps the first step is that the pathogen when it enters the body it automatically starts to release chemicals okay these chemicals attract for them the phagocyte so the phagocyte knows that there is a pathogen due to the chemicals released by this pathogen and these chemicals attract the monocyte to the pathogen we call this step attraction or chemotaxis. Chemo comes from the chemical substances released by the pathogen. The next step is that the pathogen sticks to the cell membrane of the monocyte or the granulocyte of the phagocyte in general. And this step is called adherence or attachment. The pathogen attaches to the uh, membrane of the monocyte. The next step is that the monocyte swallows or ingests the pathogen and forms around it a phagosome, a sac called, called phagosome. This step is called ingestion, where the uh, pathogen is swallowed inside the uh, macrophage and uh, a, a sac is surrounded, surrounds this pathogen. Next step is that there are lysosomes in the cytoplasm of the phagocyte, they fuse to the phagosome and they, uh, they form what we call a phagolysosome. Now inside the phagolysosome there is a release of certain enzymes which are chemical substances that, bri that break down the pathogen okay, and uh, kill it. This step is called digestion. Here the pathogen is being digested by the phagocyte. The last step now is that when the pathogen is 
digested completely, it's broken down. The monocyte gets rid of it by exocytosis. We, we see the pathogen residues, and this step is called elimination, where the monocyte or macrophage eliminates the pathogen residue outside of it to go and start all over again if it was not dead to start the phagocytosis process all um, again against the other pathogens. So again, the phagocytosis is a process where the, the phagocyte, for example, the macrophage wants to swallow the pathogen. It's a very simple idea. The macrophage has to swallow and break down the pathogen. So first, it is attracted to the pathogen. It comes near to it. Then it attaches to it on the membrane. Then it swallows it and forms a phagosome. Then it breaks it down by the enzymes secreted by the lysosomes here. Okay, it's breaking it down. It's tearing it up. And finally, it releases it outside by exocytosis. It eliminates the dead pathogen outside its cytoplasm. That's all for today about the non-specific immune response. I hope you understood what uh, I explained. Thanks for watching and make sure you come back for new videos. Goodbye. Thank you.